In this video, we are going to break down the details of your basic belly dance posture. This is super important. Please do not skip this intro video because I find that belly dance posture goes a long way in making sure that you can do the movements safely for your body and also that you can do the movements very effectively because a lot of our basic dance posture really makes a lot of the movements easier to do when the posture is correct. Belly dance is not a very high impact dance. It can be done by all ages and body types and fitness levels with just a couple of quick ideas about posture. So let's go ahead and break that down. Let's build it from the feet. When you walk into class, I want you to think about your feet being hip width apart, plus or minus. Now, when we talk about hip width, I'm talking about your hip bones, not the outsides of your hip, but the hip bones themselves. If you were to drop a line down from your hip bone, it should bisect your foot, right? Right in the middle, maybe around your second or your third toe, and you're gonna wanna think about the feet being right about there. Now, depending on how you're built and your body structure, you might find that slightly more inside of that place or slightly more outside of that place is more comfortable for you. Always listen to your body, right? Don't do something that's uncomfortable just because I said so. <laughs> I appreciate it, but don't, right? So keep yourself healthy and safe as you do this. So we're gonna look at the line that goes straight down from the hip bones, bisecting that foot, and your feet are going to turn to face forward like the number 11, like you're standing on you know, a railroad track, and they're both parallel if possible. From here, we're gonna take a tiny little micro bend in our knees, and by micro bend, what I mean is, check out what happens if you pull your knees all the way back and straighten them. This is not where we're going to be, but for example, take them back and straighten them, and now just like sort of unlock them, like release them, right? So we're not in a plie, we're not here, we're gonna be just in a tiny little micro bend, it's just a release from straight, is going to be our home posture for today. There are plenty of movements that we're going to do that utilize much larger movements of the knees and much deeper bend, but not yet, right? So that tiny little micro bend. As you do that, I want you to check out where your knees are in relationship to your feet. And if you wanna go ahead and kind of bend and straighten just a little bit more so you have a clearer view of what's going on, go ahead and do that. What we're gonna aim to do today is make sure that the knees and the toes are in alignment. It's very common that knees will either try to go inside or try to go outside of where the feet are. And this is generally bad for your knees and your knee alignment and your knee caps. And so I want you to look and see if it is comfortable enough for you to bend the knees and keep the knees tracking out straight over your feet when you're looking at it from a bird's eye view. If it's uncomfortable for any way, in any way, like I said, listen to your body. But if you find that your knees don't track quite right and you can correct them, now is the time to start doing that. There's a lot of knee bends in belly dance. A lot of our movement is driven by our legs and our knees as well as our muscles, but the knees get used quite a bit. So it's best to learn to use them correctly and safely in order to elongate the amount of time that we can dance, right? Because we're gonna be dancing forever. It's my plan anyway. Another thing to watch as you bend, right now, of course, we're doing that tiny little micro bend, but as we get further along in movements and you bend the knees more deeply, I want you to be sure that your knees stay behind your toes, right? So it's very easy when you start bending more. So let's go ahead and take this into a deeper plie. Very easy to let your weight shift forward into your toes and your knees to push in front of your toes. We wanna to try to avoid that. And the way we're going to avoid that is by imagining the weight staying a bit more in our heels. And as we bend our knees, it's almost like we're sliding down a little bit of a wall behind us. Like the wall is staying right there. We are keeping our back on it. So I can bend my knees more deeply and keep the line of my knee behind the line of my toes. Does that make sense? So instead of canting out over the toes here, we're gonna think of staying behind us here. So what do we have? Feet parallel, about hip width apart. Knees micro bent, knees and toes in alignment. This next part is super important and I find if you have any discomfort in class, it typically comes when this next piece of our alignment and our posture is forgotten. And this is the long spine idea. We're gonna be looking at our pelvis. We all have a natural curvature in our lower body, some of us more than others, depending on how endowed you are. I don't have much of a curvature at all, but I'm working on it. Anyway, so I'd like to think about keeping our lower body in alignment. There's a couple of ways to think about this. One is to think about tucking the pelvis gently forward. So instead of allowing the back to be very bent here and very curved, by engaging in the front of the body, 
to bring the hips underneath you. What I want to avoid is any over tucking and any tensing up, constant tensing up in the pelvis. So another way you can kind of think about this is if we had a tail and we wanted to point that tail down at the floor by shifting our weight ever so slightly forward and shifting those hips underneath us to tuck that tail under. What I'm not going to do is squeeze my glutes together to create it. You can squeeze your glutes and bring your hips more underneath you and your pelvis longer, but we're not gonna do that because we wanna keep the glutes nice and relaxed for our shimmies and other kinds of movements. So while we're here, knees slightly soft because if your knees are locked, this is a lot harder to do and you'll find yourself getting off balance. Knees slightly soft. I want you to think about engaging ever so slightly in the lower abdominals down in the pelvis and tilting that pelvis underneath you to imagine a nice long spine. A lot of what we do here in the hips utilizes this area of our body quite a bit and you don't want to be doing this while your hips are released back behind you because you'll find that your lower back starts to get pretty tired and maybe a little bit sore. So I want you to think about regularly in class, especially if you do start to have that sensation, of bringing those hips underneath you, tucking your pelvis ever so slightly, continuing to keep the abdominals relaxed, but elongating in that lower body and lengthening the bottom of your spine and your tailbone towards the ground. This is something that I find in life in general when I spend a day standing for a long time. And then of course we get a little tired. So we stand on one leg, we pop our hip out. Then I start to feel it in my lower back. And then when I can remind myself to come into my belly dance posture, and sometimes I'll tuck a little bit extra and release, it feels so good. So this sort of lower body engagement and long spine idea is not only useful in the classroom, but outside the classroom. So play with that and see how it feels for you. So where are we at? We've got our feet, our parallel hip width apart. Our knees are soft, gently soft, tracking out over our toes, but behind our toes, right? Now we have this gentle pelvic tuck to create a nice long lower spine. The next part of our belly dance posture, because we're not done yet, is that we want to have our chest lifted away from our hips. My favorite way to get into this posture is to imagine that I'm climbing a rope up to the ceiling without the aid of my legs. I will never get there because my upper body is not strong enough yet. But imagine if it could. Go ahead and do this with me. So you're reaching and grabbing and pulling yourself up towards the ceiling. Now come back to center, keeping your chest right where it is. Lower your arms and your shoulders only, right? I find I end up in this great, very proud peacock lifted chest feeling and I feel like a million dollars like I could take over the world, right? Which is a totally different thing, but that's not a bad feeling, right? So I've got my chest lifted and I have a longer canvas to work with, right? We're doing a lot of belly in our belly dancing, yes? And so the longer my canvas is, the more space I have to work with. And so if I can keep my chest away from the hips, it allows me to really utilize this area of my body. And it also allows me to isolate my hip movements from my chest movements. Otherwise, when it sits down on top, they all become one. One, right, so we're going to think about that nice elongated chest, lifting it up nice and proud like you should be. Yes, nice and lifted away from the hips. Be careful as you do that, that you don't end up here. So shoulders, I think of rolling them back and down and sticking them into my back pockets back there, right, which is going to also aid in our arm posture when we start to work with our arms being up. So let's go ahead and do that. If you think about your shoulders rolling back and down and setting into your pockets or maybe even just sitting on a shelf behind you to help hold up your arms. We're gonna look at our arms in second position where we're gonna do a lot of our drilling. The arms are slightly bent, like I'm hugging a giant tree. You can imagine like a huge sequoia. I'm hugging this huge tree. My elbows are slightly in front of me. I'm gonna bend the wrists ever so slightly so that the palms come up, shoulders are down. I can see my hands in my peripheral vision. I can actually almost see my elbows in my peripheral vision. So watch out for elbows in alignment with the shoulders or even worse, elbows behind the body because that really strains your upper body and makes upper body movements difficult to do. So elbows are going to be slightly in front of you. Hands are visible. If you'd like a little extra credit points, think about dropping your middle finger and your thumb slightly in towards each other. So instead of here, we're going to think about dropping that middle finger, bringing the thumb slightly in so it's like the thumb is an extension of the arm. So as opposed to here, it's an alignment, right? Here is our second position. This is always going to look good no matter what you're doing. So I sometimes call it safety position when all else fails and you are in doubt. Bringing the arms here is typically a pretty safe thing to do, right? Nice long neck, shoulders down away from the ears. And I think we've done it. So shake it out. 
And let's go ahead and build it one more time from the bottom up. I'll show it to you once this way, and then I'll show it to you from the back. So we're looking at feet parallel, hip bone width apart, knees micro bent, pelvis long, shoulders rolled back and down, chest lifted, arms in second position, shoulders down away from the ears, nice long neck. Now breathe. <laughs> Don't hold your breath while you do this. Breathe, right? There's a lot to be thinking about. And it's very easy to sort of just tense up and not breathe, but this, this is our home position. This is our relaxed, I'm ready to dance position, right? The more you practice it in class and in everyday life, the easier it will be to come back to. Let's try it one more time and I'll face this direction so you can see me from behind. Feet are parallel, uh, knees and toes in alignment, slight micro bend, long elongation in the lower spine, chest is lifted, Shoulders are rolled back and down. Arms are in second position. Fingertips are engaged. Neck is nice and long. And I'm breathing and relaxed. Yes? Are you relaxed? Just relax. Just relax. And there you have it. That is your basic belly dance posture. In almost every class, you're going to want to start from here because this will give you the home base. It will tune you into all these essential parts of your body for the dance. It will turn them on, wake them up, and get them ready to go.